hit you with a couple of texts real quick before we get to our guest. I hope our guest is not listening. Um, <laughs> Internet equals happiness. Internet equals porn. Porn equals happiness. Internet oh, equals please. happiness. That's one texter's disgusting formula. Thank you for that contribution. Uh, roadside memorials show that Christians are bad drivers. Wow. Wow. That's a rough joke. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and uh, and this one, I, I saw a, a memorial in Peru while I was hiking on a steep trail. Came across a memorial cross with flowers. Our guide said a drunk guy fell off his donkey and down the mountain. <laughs> you know, the only thing that's kept me from that fate is I don't ride donkeys. <laughs> Good decision in retrospect. Well, this is uh, this is great. Please welcome uh, to the Armstrong and Getty Show, Bill Whalen, who is a Hoover Institution Research Fellow since 1999. He is also an old hand in politics, uh, national and California, and he's worked with Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, former Congressman Tom Campbell, uh, former L.A. Mayor Richard Reardon, also uh, worked with Governor Pete Wilson back in the day, and um, uh, did a presentation at the Hoover Institution yesterday. Bill Whalen, how are you, sir? I'm good. I can probably say that I've never been on a donkey. <laughs> never, you know. never even once? <laughs> Sober or uh, or not. You know, Jack and I may have yeah. met at a donkey basketball game originally. Possibly. Well, that was one of our early interactions. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. You know, I, 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 anyway, uh, thanks for coming down for Hoover yesterday. And the funny thing, guys, I've always wondered if you actually exist, if there actually was an Armstrong or a Getty or some sort of showbiz expectation, but you two actually exist. That's true. Who would create us? <laughs> uh, and why? So, so uh, listen, Bill, one of the, the, the aspects of your talk yesterday that we found so interesting um, is the idea of what it will take to get any sort of uh, conservative or even moderate thinking back into the blue states of the West Coast where we broadcast. And we don't particularly care, as you probably know, whether... Uh, it's in the, the person of a Republican or a declined state or an independent or a libertarian or, or, or a Democrat who gets into office and changes their mind. Um, what's it going to take for some of the conservative ideals that we both like to take a little root again? I think it's going to take an event or a series of events that capture the public's attention. Uh, one mistake people make about California is they assume that what happens in Sacramento plays around the state, and that's not necessarily true. Sacramento is, in many respects, in respects, a very big bubble, and news doesn't permeate outside of it. So the question is, what can happen in your government that people really notice? And what I mentioned yesterday was the recall in 2003. We look back on it, we think Arnold Schwarzenegger and the, and the oddity of the race, but you know what preceded the recall was at least one event uh, that did capture the public's attention, and that was the energy crisis. Remember, the rolling blackouts in California. Mm. People, people, people certainly took notice of what was going on, and they so you know, their state government. And then during the recall, it was the increase in the vehicle license fee, the car tax, where people were coming home from work and opening up their mailbox and finding a little notice from state government saying that their car tax had been doubled without their knowledge because they don't pay attention to Sacramento. So those are the sorts of things that have to get on the public's radar, I think, for them to want to uh, reexamine their government and question the direction it takes. So given the level of forgiveness that progressives get, again, up and down the West Coast, it's either going to have to be disaster or overreach by the left? Yeah, uh, what I mentioned yesterday was disaster, and I know there's kind of a hush over room when I did, because when you suggest that, it sounds like you're wishing it, and I'm certainly not. But, you know, you mentioned I worked for Pete Wilson. Pete Wilson in 1994 had to face a very big mess in Los Angeles called the Northridge Earthquake, uh, uh, January of 1994. The last really big earthquake that's hit California, by the way, but let's suppose for a second, and again, I'm not wishing that, but uh, let's suppose that a very large earthquake did hit Los Angeles and shut down portions of Los Angeles. There'd be a question as to what your state government was doing in response to it. And I think that's the kind of situation that opens the door for people to examine their relationship with Sacramento. I've always been interested in why the um, uh, Republican Party, or just particularly uh, conservative ideas, because those two terms don't always go together, as we've seen, um, haven't been sold in a better way or received in a better way by Hispanics. Because, you know, you got Catholic families, religious families, the family unit is very important to them. A lot of the things that fit in with a lot of conservative beliefs. Hardworking. It's hardworking, that sort of thing. Why haven't those come together? 
some people will tell you that it's uh, simply Republicans just not paying enough time, not doing enough in the way of outreach, uh, uh, Spanish uh, media and so forth. Um, but I think it's also the presentation Republicans make. Republicans uh, have not spent enough time talking about education, not spending enough time talking about taxation, not spending enough time talking about uh, economic opportunity. And I think also not talking enough about family values, because we do think of Hispanic families in California. They tend to be very tight knit and they want, you know, classically what people in America want. They want better opportunities for their families. And so I think Republicans need to, to hone down in those directions. I know you and uh, your colleague Lon He Chen, who uh, co uh you know, authored your presentation yesterday are, are up on all sorts of data. When you look at Hispanic voters, uh, you know, the citizens, how do they feel about the immigration thing? I think there's an assumption that 98.3% of them are motivated mostly by immigration issues. No, uh, they're not. Uh, Hispanic voters are not unlike Anglo voters, and they do care much about education. They care about crime and their local well-being, and they care about the conditions that their children will inherit one day. So they're not different in that regard. The challenge for Republicans is that Republicans have been very effectively demonized, uh, going back to the Prop 187 debate in California, in that they are in the shorthand of uh, conversations. They are anti-immigrant. They are racist. They are uh, Latino-phobic, if you will. And so, again, I think this is why it behooves Republicans to spend more time having direct conversations. But, you know, the question is whether or not time is on the Republican side. On the one hand, there are more Hispanic. Uh, the Hispanic population is growing in California. Uh, you keep hearing this phrase, sleeping Hispanic giant. Will it actually mobilize and votes? It'll be very interesting to see, by the way, this primary since you have not one but two Democrats uh, running uh, for governor who are Latino, if they'll mobilize in that regard. Uh, but Republicans, I think, do need to rethink their strategy because it's just not working. And not just in California, but nationwide. We see Diane Feinstein, uh, you know, if she if she goes out the door, she's going to be replaced by somebody further left. We see other examples across the country, Republicans and Democrats, where we're getting, you know, further to the edges as opposed to further toward the middle. Is that just uh, the pendulum swinging back and forth a period of time we're going through or, or what? A bit of a pendulum, but also keep in mind that there's not just a pendulum, but this is a backswing. Uh, look at what's going on in Orange County right now, where you have at least one city, Los Alamitos, which does not want to go along with uh, the state sanctuary law. And now the Orange County supervisors are talking about defying the law. And so you might have a situation where the state is suing the uh, when the nation is suing the state over sanctuary law, the state may have to sue the county over sanctuary law. So this is, you know. Immigration policy is a Gordian knot, perhaps unlike any other in, uh, in American politics, where you're talking about just so many moving parts. And, and you know, what's sad is how the political system just lets us down that, you know, there cannot be a debate in Washington. I mean, look at, look at, look at just the recent situation in Washington. What is more simple than Trump and the Democrats doing a deal on DACA for the border wall, but yet the two sides cannot do it? Well, yeah, since, since, you, brought, since you brought up immigration, that's the one that, that depresses me as a guy. I believe in democracy, and, but obviously... Yeah. It's 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 frustrating when you see the polling on this. They're not even controversial, really, because you have two thirds or more on all the issues. The vast majority of people are all right with the DACA people staying. The vast majority of people want to secure right. the borders. The vast majority of people want a merit based system. And and so why can't we why can't we make that happen? Well, two things. First of all, uh, there's a question of political gain. You look at the two parties right now in this midterm election. Uh, I'm going to pin a lot of blame on the Democrats here. I think the Democrats have made a calculation that at the end of the day, they do not want to deal with Donald Trump on DACA because why they think there'll be more punishment uh, uh, directed at Trump without progress on immigration. So that's one short term problem. But it's not unlike the gun debate where you can look at you know, certain items such as DACA, and that's kind of low-hanging fruit, if you will. It's when you get further down the line, you start asking questions about, you know, uh, about uh, amnesty and and about chain migration and so forth, where the two sides really do differ. And again, you look at guns, for example, where, well, doing more background checks, we're doing, you know, more money for mental health care. These are very quick and obvious things to do. But when you actually get down to the idea of, say, taking away somebody's AR-15, now people get very bothered. Bill Whalen is a research fellow at the Hoover Institution. Uh, I'd like to get back to, uh, away from the grubby politics and back to lofty ideas, the, the area I'm okay. most comfortable in. Uh, but and actually, I want to talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger briefly, because Arnold, one of the great disappointments of my... He can my... lift a lot of weight over his head yeah. when he was younger. Yeah, yeah, and that's pretty much where it ends. It, one, of the great, <laughs> one of the great disappointments of, of my uh, life as a, a fan of politics. Um, but the interesting thing about Arnold was that... Uh, his big, his five um, propositions that he lumped together. Uh, right. If and, and we talked to Gary Dietrich from Citizen Voice about this a lot back in the day. If you polled those issues, they were overwhelmingly 
popular in California, but he just overreached right. and got kicked in the, his uh, Austrian uh, parts by, by the unions and the rest of it, and then he just said to hell with it and gave up on being governor. Uh, but those ideas hold well. Do Does California or, or Oregon or Washington have to wait for some you know, celebrity or star or transcendent personality, and will their charm lead the voters to say, yeah, that makes perfect sense to me, and all of a sudden we're back to being moderate? Well, yeah, you're going to need somebody charming to present it or somebody persuasive because what Arnold learned was when you get into a fight with the firefighters and the nurses and the teachers, they're the people who wear the white hats in society, and so you're going to lose uh, against them on TV. Uh, it's funny. I just uh, finished writing a piece about Arnold last night to run on the Sacramento Bee later this week, and um, I find what he is doing vis-a-vis the Republican Party very discouraging in that he is he's telling donors to not give money to Republicans. He wants to put the party on a starvation diet so it will become more moderate. And, you know, the last thing Republicans in California need is for Arnold to be a scold or a lecturer about what direction they should go. I, I wish the governor were a little more productive in his time. And I think what the governor maybe needs to think about is perhaps starting a third party in California, because if he wants to push the Republicans in a more moderate direction, he's just going to lose conservatives who will break off and they will form their own party. So maybe he just needs to cut the chase and do a party of his own. Well, and he's, he's joined forces with that transcendent figure, John Kasich, to get this idea going. So I wish them well. So this, and that was exactly the germ of the idea for the column. And, you know, Arnold wants to be Don Quixote, and he wants to tilt at windmills, and he wants to sue oil companies for global warming, and he wants to change the wicked ways of the California Republican Party. Well, Don Quixote always needs a Sancho Panza, and Sancho Panza is John Kasich in this case. But if you go and you... <laughs> Which brings us back to donkeys. Point. Right. That's brilliant, Bill. Well, yes. Full exactly. circle. But if you look... You look at a poll last week in Ohio, uh, they, uh, a pollster did a hypothetical matchup of Trump versus Kasich in a, in a primary. In case of big Trump in Ohio by 11 points until May 16, Trump beats Kasich 65 to 27. So I think in terms, of, in terms of a mighty political force, I'm not sure that John Kasich is what Arnold thinks he is. But John Kasich certainly thinks that, just as Jeff Flake thinks that. And so, you know, if he wants to run against Trump in 2020, be my guest. Bill Whalen, among his many credentials, is a research fellow at the Hoover Institution. Bill, really appreciating the chat. I hope we can do this again. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming down for the presentation. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, it was absolutely terrific. Thanks.